All right, everybody. Welcome to the podcast that has not been named yet. We might have one in the next few weeks here. We, we need to do some more internal conversations, um, but appreciate you joining. And we're here to talk about mainly a few different uh, sports topics, um, but just want to check in. How's everybody's week going so far? Great. I, I'm doing good. Uh, Luke, how about yourself? Dude, I'm doing good. I think I got toasted by the sun. Uh, the time we're recording this, what is it, Saturday? Saturday at 7.45-ish. And man, the sun has really cooked me. But yeah, how about you, Coleman? I feel good. I just opened my eyes too many times underneath the water. So my <laughs> eyes are a little flushed. But other than that, we're feeling good. Very excited to do the first podcast ever in the history yes. of Jake Bennett, Bill Bennett, Luke, and Coleman. Yeah, this will be. You didn't say mankind. I thought that's what you're gonna. Go <laughs> with, this this will be the first of many. I actually uh, I didn't tell you guys this, but yesterday I had a quick test of the, uh, the lateral quickness. Safe to say, I still have it. We were, I was walking downtown, and a car whipped out in front of the metro uh, against the light. Almost hit me, but I did a quick jump step like I was hitting the a gap, and uh, dodged it. Dodged it real quick. I'm <laughs> glad I didn't. Uh, I, I was thinking originally, oh man, I might only move like Eddie Lacy and then I would have been struck by the car, but thankfully I <laughs> had a little bit more in me than that. So that was a good thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I, just kind of kicking it off here, guys. I think one of the things that has been going on, on Twitter quite a bit is some would call him a trendsetter, trailblazer, fashionista, Renaissance man, Renaissance man I guess at this point to world traveler. And it only seems appropriate to mention Ryan Russillo's new hoodie that sold out in two days, but even better than that, some of the memes that are going around, those have been doing numbers and have been making waves. And I just wanted to see what's everybody's favorite um, captions or, or memes that have come out of that. So Luke, you, you got, you got some honest. Well, uh, yeah. So I think the, it's funny. Uh, a lot of them, are, a lot of the comments have to do with, you know, him releasing it in the middle of, you know, at the beginning of summer, pretty much, you know, right. Uh, I'm here in Texas. I think the majority of every, you know, all, all of us are in the South where it's, you know, pretty, pretty dang hot. So what, what's the point of a sweatshirt right now? I guess you're not, you know, uh, trying to get ahead for the summer or the winter rather, but thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. He's just, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's funny. I'll, I'll say that it's funny. Rosillo, he's also, you know, just a very awkward dude in general. So some of the um, modeling photos uh, just are. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll definitely pin that here. But the the modeling, and I think it'd be hard for anyone to do. So I, I first I want to give him props for leaning into it. He is he is getting dragged a bit for the modeling pictures, and and we'll put this up here. You can decide for yourself. But I I don't think he should. I think he should lean into it more. There's no reason he can't be Giselle and a world cast <laughs> sports commentator. I think it's the camo that doesn't do him appropriately. If he would have just used the black one, the camo though, that camo just hides his beauty. That's all it does. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I do want to make a correction. His his polo his uh sweatshirt didn't sell out in two days. It sold out in like hours. Hours. Came there, out there is an audience. There is an audience. Day. I checked Friday morning to buy one. Gone. All sizes. Camo. Non camo. Gone. Yep. But. My, I would say my favorite one, and no, I'm not a, I'm, I'm the, I'm a big Rosillo guy, so I, I do keep up with all the Rosillo memes, Rosillo book club. But instead of putting in, like credit card, phone number, email address, gym stats, player comp. That's how you have to get the. That's how you get the polo. You get, a, you get a special discount if you do that. Hey, that's a good one. What would everybody's uh, player comp be? I, I'd love to hear this. Gosh, are we doing NBA? I'm assuming NBA yep. player comp. Oh, okay. No, is yes. it uh, all time? All time or current? All time doesn't matter. All time. Oh, that would be... need a second. What do y'all? What do y'all got to go ahead? I'm gonna need a second to pick somebody good. Uh, I'm I'm going. You know, stick it to my Memphis roots. Probably Zach Randolph, flat footed and bruiser <laughs> in the paint. Zach Randolph. That's a yeah. good one. Below the rim kind of player. Oh, 100. percent Can't shoot by, beyond yeah. the arc at all. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, they shoot. Occasionally, I'll pick fights with Blake uh, Blake Griffin. So. <laughs> right. uh, 
who would I who would I go with? I, I think I, I'd probably have to go with someone along the lines of like a three and D wing. Um You strike me as Sam Hauser. <laughs> I, could be, I could be modern day Sam Hauser, yeah. Uh Mike Miller, any 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 of those Mike Miller those shout out catch and shoot guys. Yeah, that, that would do. That is <laughs> not who I thought was gonna get mentioned. It was, oh, it was Mike Miller. <laughs> Miami, <laughs> Heat. Miami Heat Mike Miller. Maybe we could get him on the show sometime. Maybe maybe Mike wants to join us yeah, eventually future, in the future, future episode. <laughs> what about you, Bo? Uh, I don't know. Basically, just some point guard that uh, plays more for assists than points. So my first thought was Steve Nash, but that's way too high, in my opinion, because if I was Steve Nash, I wouldn't be doing podcasts right now. So Thanks. probably like, uh, I don't know. I'd probably say like a Marco Rubio or like a Brandon Jennings. Kind of just like no wild from wild Florida. plays, but not really consistent with it. Say it again. The senator from Florida, Marco Rubio. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not him. Not him. Not to be confused. Uh, Ricky Rubio is what I did. I say Marco. You did. Keep it in there. That's well, him too. Maybe I will be. Uh, maybe I will be present. Okay, so. uh, I I really thought you were going to go Aaron Kraft, but that would have been a zag. Oh, I love right. Aaron Kraft. Shout out. Shout the... out Aaron Kraft. That's probably the best. That's actually probably better. Yeah, we're going with the Aaron Kraft. We're going to lock that in. That's what I actually think. Oh, Aaron, did Aaron Kraft? Sorry to cut you off, Coleman, but did Aaron Kraft get any minutes in the league? I don't know. Um, for the basketball tournament, he does the Ohio State team. Him mm. and Jared Sellinger. Oh, TBT. The TBT. Yeah. TBT. Okay. Gotcha. But I don't know if he got minutes in the league. To be honest, <laughs> Coleman. That's fine. Well, I will let that slide. But uh, I got a question to get all of us rolling into more sports topics. And this was a big topic with some of my friends that you guys probably have thought of, but figured this is a good way to break everything. So who in July, when NCAA football comes out, are you building the dynasty? You're going to make them the new Alabama football for NCAA football on the video game. You're and team? Yep. What team? What team are you picking? And obviously, don't say like Ohio State. Don't already take some blue chip. Like that sucks. Take as we were talking about, the hottest take at work was somebody said, I want to pick Navy because they have discipline, end quote, was mm -hmm. his logic behind it. So, Coleman, we'll let you start. I would say I would, my initial gut reaction was to say Delaware. But then again, I don't want to play in the shit-ass Conference USA. <laughs> like, I want to be in either this. I probably want to pick a Sun Belt team. And I would, I would go Texas State. Work my way up as an offensive coordinator. Well, actually, if, if I could, God, one day, hopefully they do this, allow me to become a position coach. <laughs> work my way up from like secondaries coach, defensive coordinator, and kind of just work my way up the ladder, work my way up the rungs. I would, I would pick Texas State. You have a good recruiting base. You're in a good conference. Like, I would say not the premier group of five conference, like the American but you're in the second best. You're in the most, I, the fun belt. You're in the most fun conference. Good recruiting base, awesome school, good stadium. And then you can get a lot of transfer from all the Texas schools. There. Yeah. I, I thought you were going to say Maryland because they're pretty bad too, but that's all right. No. Huh. Jake, what about you? Who would you take as your team? Yeah, it's funny you say Navy. I was going to say Army just as uh, <laughs> in honor of Shane Gillis and, and try to, again, maybe – Maybe build build that up. You always have the classic Army Navy rivalry. Um, now, if you do an Armed Force uh, Armed Force Academy, you know you can't use the transfer portal. I'm okay with that. I'm you okay with that. From high school, I, I I want linemen that are like 185 on a good like, like every day program. after a cheeseburger, and only running the triple option. So I'm okay. I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, Luke. Um, I'd say. Potentially like a two lane, potentially. Um, or if I wanted to go a little maction action, um, maybe like Bowling Green, um, you know, kind of like choose it. the Ohio roots a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be kind of hilarious. So, That's a good pick. That's a good yeah. pick. What about you, Bo? I've had I have two schools in mind. So First off, I, you can, either you can just go with like, we want to do the really fun school and just be like only good at football or you got to make it the everything school is how I look at it. So you can do like MIT and just build them into just some studs. You already know they have all the mathematics down. They, you could learn a whole playbook with them in about seven hours. Just hand it to them, done. Good, right? Recruiting, probably not going to get anyone in the transfer portal just because nobody could probably get into that school. Otherwise, 
zag and go the other way and you go over to the crosswinds in wyoming nothing out there but football can't be distracted build it into a powerhouse anybody who comes plays you like imagine a non-conference game like florida state out to wyoming and just gets pounded by wyoming you know the beautiful mountains texas take down. Sure. say it again they beat texas tech this year that's what i'm saying wyoming. they're on the up and <laughs> notable alumni josh allen was leading the Wyoming don't know what their mascot is or whatever the names are. Probably. Coleman, I feel like you would if you have any Probably. idea, but yep. I think I pick Wyoming. That'd be my school to build a powerhouse. I uh, I was also thinking we were, I threw out the idea that we'd be diving into 2026, 2027 early mock drafts, but that uh, that wasn't exactly a popular thing that uh, everyone's ready for. So uh, my big boards are ready. We'll, we'll hold that segment for a later time when we get McShay on, but um I, I was a bit curious to hear a bit more too about. Did any of you watch the game last night? Mavs, Mavs, and the uh, Timberwolves. So, Timberwolves. I had it on. I, I was watching. Uh, I had it on uh, TV two or TV one. Really, I had a. Uh, I was watching uh, Shane Gillis's tires on Netflix on, it. on my computer. But yeah, I know. I thought it was. Um, you know, first half, it seemingly was uh, somewhat of a blowout, but hey, they, they don't call it, um, they call it a tale of two halves for, you know, a reason. So the, you know, Timberwolves kind of letting them have it in the first half and second half, it definitely, um, I guess, I don't want to say it's their youth because they're not, you know, they're a decently old team. They have a fair amount of veterans and whatnot, but, um, you know, you know, you, you get hit by, Luca and clutch in clutch minutes and it's just uh it, it's it's a pain you know I don't know what you guys yeah. saw but I I've seen the Luca you know step back three in clutch minutes many many times against my Grizzlies so um I don't know it's 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 it was something you know it wasn't great you 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 knew it was coming I think anybody who was watching that as soon as that switch happened you knew it was game set match right there yeah. And wasn't great. The, the <laughs> only other, the only other things I, I had a problem with too was I don't know if you saw. I think it was either early fourth quarter, or late third quarter. Uh, Luca throws that long pass down to Gafford, and he hits that ridiculous layup as he's falling down. But he two hand shoves the the defender right right before. And like if you were playing five hundred at recess, or that was a jump ball on a hail mary <laughs> in the NFL, I mean. You're probably fined, locked in jail. Like I, I don't know how they, I don't know how they missed that one, but that was insane. And I, I don't know why they had Gobert out there in the final seconds either. I, I figured they'd stick with a smaller lineup and switch everything like they were doing, like two, three possessions earlier. I, I don't know what the thinking was behind that, unless they were worried about the pick and roll lob that they were running pretty successfully there. I love and I respect and I love the fact that you took notes on a legal pad <laughs> last night and are pointing out specific possessions that happen in the early fourth quarter, late third quarter, and then also deep diving the final couple minutes of the game because that's what's important. But the fact that you, you're you talking about legit possessions, almost <laughs> tail from the couch-esque, like Rosillo. You know, I took I took a few pointers, and it, it was good to watch the game. It, you know, not just, not just analyzing it, um, possession by possession, but it's, a, it's been a really, the back and forth is amazing. Even like Nas Reed, what was he? Eight of nine from three or seven of eight, something like that. He just couldn't miss. And so I don't think the T wolves are coming back. I don't know if you guys think differently, if they, they can come back down two Oh, but you think they can. I do. Anthony Edwards is the man. Okay. This is, this is really what I think as far as American superstars for the NBA, you had Jordan, then you had LeBron. Now you're kind of in like a void. Like we no, don't. You have Durant. You have Durant. Durant. I mean, Durant now is not Durant I mean, ten years ago. I, you had Durant then. You had Curry. You had Durant. You're missing a whole ten. Oh, years. Hold, hold on. We're talking face of the league, though. Face of the league, right? I guess you could say could say Curry for a while. He did change the game. Everybody now at the age of seven is shooting forty foot shots, basically. But my point being, moving forward. Basically, all like the real superstars right now that are dominating outside of Anthony Edwards and Morant are all foreigners. Like Luca, Giannis, and Joker, all really kind of hold their own, and they're all like huge household names, but they're all from overseas. So, in my opinion, I think now that everything is basically not competing just against like the Americans, it's overseas, and it's like 
basketball is obviously growing much faster. I think it's going to be weird to see how the, like the Americans shake out because all the Europeans that come from playing in the Euro leagues always say it's much harder to score overseas than it is in the NBA because of the different rules of like three second defensive three seconds and hand checking and all that. But circle back, Anthony Edwards, I think is the uh, basically the next face of the NBA. And given John Morant's off the court issues recently, hopefully he straightens out. Big fan of him, but uh, we're saying either one of those two basically are going to be like the next American like face of the NBA if they have another one. Um, yeah, you think you think Jaws in a little hot water, huh? <laughs> we yeah, slightly. Well, we said well, we said. <laughs> I mean, he, that's a whole other. Memphis might not be the city for him. That's all I'm saying. That, that's... <laughs> The thing we said with Ja was if Ja would have had this suspension and then immediately gone out and started training with the Navy SEALs, like raising awareness for gun violence, he'd be America's man. Like imagine that. Just comes back. Yeah, exactly. Let's <laughs> you see look at look at Luke. Luke, you want to chime in being a Grizzlies fan? See, uh, you know, when you were talking about face of the league, I was like, you know, Ja Morant would have been the face of the league if, you know, things were not the way they have in the past and um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Anthony Edwards is seemingly uh, becoming that guy. I would say if we were going like, uh, you know, taking, you know, account for a lot of like, you know, the international um, players in the league, I think Luca um, or even like, um, I th- isn't Jason Tatum, isn't he like, is he, is he American or is he like Canadian? Louis. Is he? Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, maybe Wendy. <laughs> Wemby, yes. Wemby or like Shy or Shay, uh, Gilgis Alexander, maybe. Um, but I don't know. Luke, don't here's know. the real question: Do you think if Ja was the face of the league, they'd switch the NBA logo and it'd be like it'd be his face turned with the dreads, but he'd be like blowing out smoke from a pistol or something like that? That would <laughs> that'd be the silhouette. Looks like James Bond. <laughs> no, I, you know, as much as a homer I, uh, uh, you know, as I am from Memphis and the Grizzlies, I, I still think, um, uh, you know, the logo should stay the way it is. Who is it? Jerry West is who is uh, who it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Jerry now. West for now. I yeah. Thought, yeah. So, yeah. You think if Jod, God forbid, became not God forbid, but if he became the face of the league, do you think there'd be an uptick of gun violence throughout this country? Uh, <laughs> the face of the league. So is this is this like uh you know how people correlate like video games to gun violence and we're <laughs> you know is it that way? I don't know. I I think it's a Memphis uptick of strip club usage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think, I think Harden's got that covered, but I don't know. I think Memphis as a whole, there. I don't know if that's going to change any statistics there. No. We'll see. Dude, I th- the best thing was when uh, was Kawhi. It was like he was on load management, and then somebody got a photo of him in like the VIP strip club, like the same night after the game. But I do hope I hope Ja becomes the face of the league, or Anthony Edwards, because Anthony Edwards' personality obviously has like the volume or like all the colors to it, where it's like you just turn on the mic, you know he's going to say something funny that's like entertaining. And then Ja, the way he plays is basically just like it's an awe to watch him, like how high he can jump and. Half the things he could do, the majority of people who are in the NBA can't even compare to. So hopefully he straightens out. One of the two I think would be good for like the American, I guess, face of the league. Yeah. Ant might be able to do it, but. How come no one's, no one's thrown out Tatum? Tatum? I like Tatum. I love Tatum. He's finished top five in MB, MVP voting the past two years. John Moran hasn't played a game, in over, a competitive game in over a year. And yeah, you can say a ring, but he does. Uh, he's at least played in the finals. Not to like shame on Ja or anything like that. I like him. It's fine. Like, you can shoot him. It's okay. Best team I in the see. Heat the past couple seasons. That's that's a fair point. I mean, that's completely fair. We were talking about this earlier before we started recording. But uh, what do you guys think of Ja? Or, excuse me, Jason Tatum being clutch because I think that's the biggest knock. Like he's really good. Definitely like. But going back to the point of, like, people didn't think LeBron was clutch in 2010. I mean, Skip Bayless went on thousands and thousands of rants. <laughs> not, not being clutch. And then the t- 2010 finals, but he's still the face of the league at that point in 2010. True. Fair. I mean, there's no knock there. But it's also LeBron. Like, like you know he basically can do everything. Like, on the court. I mean, people can, like, knock on him. But, like, when he walked out there, like, the whole game would change. Yeah, but, like, now Anthony Edwards, it's such a, like, a recent – 
No, I don't want to, recency bias. Because I don't, no one talked about two years ago during the Memphis Minnesota series mm-hmm. when they when they lost that series and Anthony Ed wasn't there. I think it's just marketing. I think Anthony Edwards is just marketable. I think he talks like, you know, all the press conferences, whatnot, like, you know, like all the things with, you know, he's like, oh, uh, Chuck's like, oh, I haven't been to Memphis or uh, Minnesota in a while. And he's like, you know, bring your ass, you know, like, that's <laughs> you know, like, but. I don't know. I think it may be marketable. Um, maybe because you don't, I don't ever see anything like, I mean, social media is such a big thing. He I don't see Kobe after he died. That is true. He did. <laughs> okay. I got a fun. Okay. I saw this on, uh, I think I saw this on Twitter, but it was like down the rabbit hole of Michael Jordan is actually Anthony Edwards dad. Have you ever seen this? Conspiracy. Yeah. Muller's dad. I thought. I mean, if that came out to be true, you know how cool that'd be. It's like MJ LeBron back, basically MJ's bloodline. Like that'd be kind of badass. That would be pretty sweet. I think that's one of the things though with Ant is he he has that like Michael Jordan swagger. I think within his game, you look at last night though, and I think to your point, Coleman, like two years ago, why weren't we talking about it? I think the strides he's made these past past two years have really helped. Um, but still last night, even like late in the game, you know, under a minute to go, he kind of gets stuck at the top of the key. I thought he was going to throw it off the damn backboard and try to do the Kobe putting it in. But isn't it every single year there's a new face of the playoffs? Like, oh, that guy plays with swagger. Oh, he's like Michael Jordan. Last year was Jimmy Butler. Oh, shit. Michael Jordan was Jimmy Butler's father last year. It's the same thing year after year after year. It's all just recency bias. You, I mean, face the league, I if you guys had to pick one out, you don't think it'd be Joker? I don't think he's the face. I think he's the best player in the league. I wouldn't call him the face of the league. Not the face of the league. He doesn't want to play basketball, which, like, he's a fantastic basketball player. Best basketball player I've ever watched in person. However, I don't think – I think he wants to be there, but his whole act of, like, oh, I want to go just race my fucking horses. Yeah. I think- I, I don't care. Stop it. it. NBA championships for him are basically like side quests. But I like, disagree. I disagree. I think he put it. Put it. Cares. Otherwise, yeah. he wouldn't try to be the best. I, and I hate that shtick that he has. Giannis, I would, I, I would call Luca face the league, and I and I don't want to hear recency bias. But I think he's been he's been one of the best players since he's gotten drafted. Yeah, I I think he he's been incredible, and I think he. I was worried for a little bit that he was going to be similar to James Harden in terms of just like ball, very ball dominant, high usage. Like what, what are the Mavs really going to be doing with him? But c- clearly him and Kyrie like that, that's quite a combo. Yeah. I mean, conference finals back to back years. They beat, they beat yeah. the Suns last year. Yeah. It's, and he, he's clearly going through some, he's hobbling around quite a bit. I read it. It might be a knee, but yeah, I mean, incredible. The, the numbers he's putting up and, everything he's able to do. So yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with Luca. Luke, what do you think? I don't know. I feel like, you know, things are getting thrown around. I mean, I don't know. I, I think Luca is top three faces of the league. Maybe, I don't know. Um, you know, Ant maybe being one of them, but you know, this whole topic of face of the league, you know, like Coleman saying, like, um, I feel like it changes every year. I feel like it's just like another talking point, I guess. And that's what exactly what we're doing. Um, but you know, what is potentially, do you think, who, who do you think it could be next year that, you know, if, if it doesn't, you know, I don't know if it changes or someone goes off next, uh, finals. Cause it's seeming like ants this year, last year, couldn't even remember who, who, who you could say it was, but next year it could be a shade, shade Gilgis Alexander or, a you know, or Joker just finds his way and actually enjoys basketball but i don't know who do you guys think maybe is that next face of the league next year where (laughs) brawny legitimately it could be you know Giannis. if Giannis made a good if the bucks could make a good playoff push for the first time in a few years and he's back healthy during the playoffs yeah i mean that'd be the easiest yeah already has the history of like being the guy it's kind of been like He's played fine, but I mean the Bucks haven't made it far in the finals recently. So I mean, if he gets back on his feet and is healthy during the playoffs and goes off like he has before, like he definitely would then probably take the talking point of like LeBron's era is over, 
Giannis is like stepping into his shoes, taking over the NBA. That'd be my vote. But what do you guys think? Scoot. <laughs> Great choice. Big bounce kidding. back year next year. Dylan Brooks. <laughs> Dylan Brooks, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go Rockets. I don't know. I mean, I think I, I wonder I, I love Wemby. Like we we saw him in person this year, um, which was incredible to see. He's, he's obviously looks like a freak, but I just feel like the Spurs need so much around him and they're playing so Chan at point guard. I, I think they're they're messing around with a few things where I think he will be eventually, but what isn't he only nineteen ish? Yeah, right, right he's around there. He's young, so. where it's like you know, time. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's got time. So yeah, probably not next year, but I'm interested to see when he'll he'll kind of take that role. And I was curious too. With we're talking about kind of faces of the league for hoops, also like potential bounce back candidates. Um, I don't know if you guys wanted to touch on this, but curious for next year with the NFL. Um, who are like your top bounce back candidates for the league? I just starting off, um, one of the ones I thought, and in, after kind of looking at it a bit more was I, I don't think Bryce Young will be nearly as bad. I think they get new offensive system in place, a new head coach. They bring in Deontay Johnson. They have, they have a lot more weapons this year where I think he'll figure it out. A lot of size concerns, but. I just don't see him being as deer in the headlights as last year. And then the other guy too, which I will say, I'll probably get a lot of heat for this, but I'm big on um, Will Levis. Like I, I think he will have as transformative of an effect on the Titans as we saw it when they went from Alex Smith to Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs. Like those offenses were abysmal. I think Levis was in some awful situations with the O-line last year. They bring in Calvin Ridley. They have Tyler Boyd. Traylon Burks is someone who is fourth wide receiver but still can develop really well. And I think the second year coming in with full starter reps, um, I expect him to take a, a huge jump too and, and sling it around quite a bit. I think for me, you know, I think we're going back, you know, we have to talk about all the quarterbacks of last year. Um, and, you know, being a fan of Indianapolis – and the Colts, um, Anthony Richardson, you know, being so banged up last year, I think that's, um, you know, seeing him this upcoming season uh, will be pretty interesting. I know, um, you know, Coleman speaks so highly of Joe Flacco, and Joe Flacco's in the QB room these uh, these days. So um, hmm. taking some of that, um, you know, leadership from him and learning from Joe Flacco, I think that'll be interesting. Uh, the key is obviously just to keep staying healthy. Um, and, you know, I think Joe, uh, Joe Flacco, um, and his leadership and all that. And we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe the Colts will be a playoff team. I really hope so. I, I really hope, um, they do have a, you know, one of the highest paid offensive linemen for a reason, I think, um, or a line is, um, in general, but, you know, maybe they'll, uh, get to the playoffs and make a run. So I, on, on that point real quick, too, I, I was going to say one of the guys who made a short list who I actually want to talk to you, too, about, Luke, just get your quick opinion. I think Jonathan Taylor, like, bound for a, a huge – now, again, this Wisconsin Badger bias, yes. Have I made a video in the past calling him a Hall of Famer while he was drafted? Yes. So you could say I'm, I have very, um, very bias towards him, but I have to think with him having a contract secured, not, you know – being having a healthy off season, not worrying about holdouts and all that, like that, that have to play into a much better productive year for him. Oh yeah. 100%. I was about to say, you know, last year there was a lot of in the off season deal with the contract and whatnot. Um, and a lot of negotiations and that kind of was a distraction at some uh, point seemingly, but yeah, this year, hopefully, um, with all that sorted, I think, um, it'll be, it'll be beautiful. I think, but last year we did have the luxury of Zach Moss. Um, and he was pretty, he was a yeah. good, um, reliever for him, but we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. I think the combination of, um, uh, once again, Anthony Richardson, um, hopefully fingers crossed being healthy and, um, you know, Jonathan Taylor, I think that, uh, the Indianapolis Colts will be making, making waves here, but the AFC South, the AFC South is brutal. Seemingly, it's it's gotten better with the Texans. I mean, the Texans in the fa in the past have not 
fared too well. I mean, when we went to a game what last year, it was or two years ago or whenever it was, it was it was a draw, and I've never seen a draw. I don't know how often that happens, or yeah. you know the probability of that, but you know it, we've come a long way. <laughs> I loved going to that with you, Luke. I will say that was it ending in a tie was so disappointing. Like I, I wish it would have been a blowout or there just would have been some ending result. Cause that would yeah. be a tie. It, I think the dude next to us would have uh, <laughs> been that way too. He's like, just let us have this game and you guys can have a super bowl of like, okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Holman, what about you? I don't mean to be a cop out here, but I want to see, I, I want to see Jim Harbaugh bounce back into the NFL. Mm. And see how that all works out. Because you get rid of Mike Williams, you get rid of Keenan Allen, okay, your best receivers, Josh Palmer and what, Ladd McConkey. Then you're also building Ravens East with Greg Roman, Gus Edwards, Dobbins, and then throw in Justin Herbert. I'm I'm curious to see how that team fares this year. You, you have to be excited with Harbaugh saying we when they drafted Joe Alt in the, that, the, that lottery pick. Mm-hmm we view offensive linemen as weapons like that, that gets you pumped. That, that goes into the roots of his Michigan ways, but I don't know. Is that, is that going to work? Do, out? Cause I mean, yeah, you, you won a national championship. Awesome. But how many times did Michigan want to fire him throughout his tenure? It's fair. Very good point. It's so I'm curious to see that. How he fares in the NFL or back in the NFL. Gus Edwards going to be getting some carries. All right. Uh, my pick Ooh. easily. I think that people are overlooking is the Falcons with Kirk Cousins. I think they are a playoff, like a deep playoff run team now that they have a QB because they've already had all the weapons. They just didn't have anybody to get them the ball. So, I mean, you have Pitts, Drake London, and B. John Robinson on offense. And if you look at like basically where Kirk's coming from in Minnesota, it's like, I mean, he's basically upgrading his weapons going to the Falcons. So I think, they could definitely be like a sleeper team that people aren't really thinking about a lot because Kirk Cousins isn't like a flashy name. Like Lamar Jackson, when you think of Lamar Jackson, it's always like crazy things he could do. Kirk's just like, I'm going to do my job. Probably going to win majority of our football games, and that's just who I am. But I also think they have the easiest division. Probably, uh, yeah, easiest division, easiest division schedule to win. Mm-hmm. Which, who's the best quarterback you're going to face, Baker? Two times a year? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Baker. Yeah, no, right. I, no shame to Baker, but like. Who's the, what? Tampa's the best team in that division with Baker's your starting quarterback? Yeah. yeah I mean, I think you're right. Yeah. Is, I, yeah. Because there's not a lot of competition there. If you win what? nine games, you win that division. <laughs> Very true. Okay. Yeah. On, the, on the QB talk, unless you got something to say, Jake, go ahead. No, just real quick. We was going to say, have you, well, I, I think the most recent drama in the draft that'd be comparable to Penix being drafted with cousins. I mean, it, it's probably Jordan love and Aaron Rodgers there, but before that, I, I can't really think of any recent surprising picks like that, but the Penix pick yeah. was a head scratcher. Joe Flacco, Lamar Jackson. Oh my God. I, no one how did you, I was going to leave. How, how did you feel when that happened? I was like the fuck, but I'm just kidding. They're not. I love Lamar. I remember we had this talk. I've always been a fan of Lamar. And now that you guys have Derrick Henry, I think you guys are actually going to yeah, be. Yeah, he was my second pick for a uh, break, uh, uh, bounce back player. Yeah. I, think I you would guys love to stay healthy. In the Ravens system. Mm-hmm. You guys would be tough to beat. Very yeah, tough with the beat. threat of Lamar where he can run, also throw, and then you have the dynamic ability of what? Of Derrick Henry running through a half decent offensive line. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be really fun to see this year. Derrick Henry isn't Jonathan Taylor, but I think we have comparable offenses. Just saying. <laughs> I, I agree with that. On the QB on the QB talk, who do you guys have? I was going to do top five QBs, but I feel like that's a little too generic. But who do you have as a QB that's going to have like a breakout year or just like stand head and shoulders above everybody else? Obviously, Mahomes is always up there because he's basically the face of the league. But... The person I was coming up with, I do think Levis could have a breakout year, Jordan Love. And I think C.J. Stroud will basically become, I think this year he could be the, easily the best QB in the NFL, given all the weapons he has. I mean, they added Diggs, Tank Dell's back after he just got shot, I believe. But he's he's going to be okay, apparently, according to the 
fantasy I, football apps. I hope Tank Dell runs out like Brian Robinson to many men by 50 cents. I mean, that yeah. would be incredible. Yeah, I, I feel like you'd have to bet them to win the Super Bowl if that's how he walks out. Be like, yeah, I'm voting on those people. And I'm blanking on one other wide receiver. Oh, Nico Collins. That's what I was thinking of. And yeah. the tight end. Did they get Dalton Schultz? from? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So look at these, all those weapons already. And then at running back, they got Damian Pierce as a backup and Joe Mixon starting. It's unfortunate. Their team is stacked. It's yeah, so no, they have <laughs> In the AFC South team, it's bad. Levis, Levis also, I think people are overlooking, like, the Titans actually have some real weapons. They probably don't have the greatest offensive line, but they have some true weapons. That, so D-Hop, Calvin Ridley, and yeah. uh, I'm blanking on the other. It's like on the third name. But I think they could have breakout I, years. And then Jordan Love adding Josh Jacobs instead of Aaron Jones. I think that's an upgrade, personally, for the Packers, just given that Josh Jacobs had so many carries with the Raiders and didn't have a QB who could really space the field for him. And Christian Watson coming back, you know, go Pack go. I'm very biased, but hopefully we can get it together. And we got like five guys who can catch the ball, but we don't really have like a stud number one on the Packers. But I think Jordan Love will be fine. And I think him and Jacobs should go hand in hand very well together. How about you, Jake? Yeah. Um, I think Love's an easy pick. I, I think Jaden Reed slept on Watson. Apparently he got his hamstring study at the, uh, they looked at him at like the UW Madison Institute of Medicine or whatever. And apparently one was a lot stronger than the other. I don't know. They both look pretty weak during the season, but um, I think he'll, he'll definitely flash in terms of other quarterbacks. Again, I, I think a guy I'm big on is just Bryce Young. I think he's going to throw it around and Panthers are going to have a bounce back year. So I'd be buying up Bryce Young in basketball drafts or, Dynasty leagues, I um, think it's a great buy low opportunity, and um, I don't know. I I wouldn't be shocked either. Geno Smith, I hope he kind of has a bounce back year, throw around to DK a bit. But the guy I'm really rooting for, um, unless he's playing the Packers, is Jared Goff. I think after all the all the hardship he went through early on, you know, and getting um, dealt from the Rams, he's really established himself, landed himself a huge deal now with the lions that locks him up and would, I don't know. I, f I feel like it, it's hard to cheer for the bears or the Vikings if they're still going on. Um, but Detroit, you just kind of feel bad for most of the time. So, um, would love to see him, uh, go on and get a super bowl for Detroit too. Yeah. I think that division is, it's basically, what is it? The Packers and the, in the lions at this point, I feel like the bears, I, yeah, they've, Got a lot of pieces in the last, you know, last couple of months, but I don't know. Them and the Vikings just kind of seem in shambles or it's still in this. I don't know if it's, you want to even call it a rebuild, but um, yeah, I don't know. As far as quarterbacks go, um, I mean, I feel like both of you guys, definitely Jared Goff and uh, Bryce Young, definitely are two potential candidates to see where they, how they turn out and see if, you know, Jared Goff can bring, uh, um, the Lions to potentially a Super Bowl. I think that's kind of this, like, I think they got a very high standard now for, for mm -hmm. once. Um, so that's kind of cool. But also seeing maybe, maybe even besides them, bring out like a Deshaun Watson, see where where he goes. If he, if he doesn't, uh, um, you know. Not the massage he, parlor. But. Yeah, if he stays out of trouble there. <laughs> like maybe, maybe that'll be something, but. I don't know how, how good the Browns will do. I mean, I know they got Nick Chubb and uh, David and, and Joku or whatever, but, um, you know, maybe he'll have something. But, yeah. I think the Browns just added Jerry Judy, which hasn't he hasn't played well in the NFL, but I still think he's an absolute stud. Yeah, for sure. Is Aaron Rodgers not due for a bounce back year? Ooh, that After is true. That first, man, see, there we go. First three minutes and a New York Jets uniform goes down like a sack of potatoes after carrying out America, the American flag. Hey, he could be a uh, vice president. So no, he, he said he wasn't. He said he okay. wasn't. Coleman, <laughs> Coleman, that's a great one. I think, yeah, we all know he's a bad man. And is, that, uh, is anyone not talking about it? They're kind of the same team as last year. A lot of people were picking them last year for potential AFC Super Bowl team. That's very Didn't true. lose a lot of guys. Right, they got coaching staff. Braylon Allen, new backup running back, Wisconsin Badger. Right. 
Brought in yep. Mike Williams if he if he's not made a glass. Yeah, that's great that. addition. That's only getting yeah. better. Yep. What? Here, here's one. Here's one. I think one guy that's really not lived up to expectations so far. Trevor Lawrence. Where mm. where does he go? Like they they brought in Gabe Davis. You know, Evan Ingram had a good year. They have Christian Kirk. They have Brian Thomas at LSU coming in this year too. Uh, but I think the general feeling around the league is pretty, pretty underwhelming. Of course, he dealt with Urban Meyer early on, which that's, you know, that's, you can look at that as almost a lost year, I'd say, but curious to get your guys' thoughts on, on T-Law. He, he definitely could have a jump in his play, kind of similar to how Goff did, I think. I, I truly think he's still a really good QB, just given that he's had all this other things off feels like with Meyer, like you said, that's basically just like a wasted year for your whole team. And I mean, him and ETN are always like a one two punch that they even were in Clemson, which I like how they're still together. I think that's kind of cool. Same with like Burrow and Chase. But I would take, I think he, if you had to rate him, he's like a B minus right now. So it's definitely like a make or break year for him because if he doesn't play well this year, then you start the talks of do we trade him? Do we go for a new QB? What do you think? I think he's a, I, yeah, I don't think he's lived up to the number one pick overall potential just yet. But he was within a game of taking his team to the playoffs last year. What they go to the playoffs twice in the past three years. So it's not like they're playing poor. He's playing poorly. He's an above average game manager, but that's not what you want from your, your number one pick, but that's what he is at this stage of his career. I, I think it's very similar to what Jared Goff Maybe I don't want to say change the scenery because I don't think they should do that. Who the hell else are you going to go get? But <laughs> At this point, like I think, give him more time and let him figure out the league. And yeah, his first year, dog shit year with the Jags, he pretty much regressed. And every QB at that point in time grew. He kind of regressed as a quarterback playing for all herbs, which is fine, not his fault. But I think he's just an above average game manager right now. I don't think it's anything you have to move off of anytime soon. But that's kind of what he is at this at this point in his career. And I I think that's the that's the issue right you're when you're looking at t-law coming in he was supposedly right the best qb prospect of like the century and uh, you know lofty expectations and of course when you're building people up like that um hard to hard to meet those things too and real quick without looking how old do you think trevor lawrence is because this threw me off the other day so i'd love to hear your guys thoughts how many years has he played in the league uh what four or five no, I think he's my age. I think he's 23, 24. Luke? I mean, he's probably 20. I'll say 25 just because. 25? Sure. He's, tw- he's 23, which was a lot younger. I, I, I initially was uh, on your side, Coleman. I was like, gosh, he's 26, probably 27 at this point. So still very young. Like definitely early, early on in NFL terms. So just thought that was interesting. I will add, though. You know, he's, you know, had, you know, a couple of years where the majority of the league or his division has been terrible, but, you know, like the Texans have been terrible forever, pretty much, and the Colts could get it together. So, um, you know, I think it's not going to be any easier, I will say, for for T-Law there. So Mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. What do you, I have a question for you guys, just staying at last probably QB thing, unless you got something else you want to move on to, but. What do you guys think of Jaden Daniels? Are you buying his stock or are you fading them? I love him. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. Obviously, you know, I don't want to set his expectations too high because that's just being me being conservative, I guess. But yeah, why not? Coleman. Oops, sorry. Go ahead, Jake. Who'd they just bring bring in as OC? Ooh, Shanahan, right? No. No, uh, Kingsbury, right? Kingsbury, yes. He's back from his Thailand sabbatical and all, all that stuff. So I think you got him and the enemy. Uh, the question with Daniels is of course, a little bit of a slender frame. Will he protect himself? Will he, will he run smart, but got Terry McLaurin. Um, I think, think they have a few things they can build around Daniels. Austin Eckler, new running back in the backfield. Definitely dual I, threat. Dude, Eckler's you watch some of those videos though. And yeah, I mean, Productivity through the roof, not denying that, but he looks like he's running a 
seven flat 40 in some of those videos. Like it just, it, it looks tough. I, I, he looks like Mike Tolbert out there at some point. <laughs> that's, that's not he, good. I, I rather have Vontae Leach at this point. Good Raven. <laughs> Paved the way for Kyle Juszczyk. And one thing that Coleman really wanted to touch on before we uh, jumped on here is I, I did want to give him a little bit of a uh, Orioles corner here. Um, and, and pose the question too, is Jackson Holiday a bust? Dead. Stop. Don't ever say that. Is he Jamarcus Russell in a sense? Oh, man. He's he a might child. Be. He couldn't even check into his own hotel room until last year. We don't have to talk. We don't have to talk Oriole baseball. <laughs> as much as I would love to talk Oriole baseball with you guys for hours and hours upon on, and I will not bore you to death. We'll, we'll save baseball. that segment. We'll save that segment for later. We need them to be, we need the Orioles to be like, you know, three years ago Orioles, you know, or four years ago Orioles when it was just like, oh, I guess we lost the game. <laughs> like, or, or we there's always the 2025 World Series uh, in, the, in the picture, you know? Yeah, we're, we're talking Richie Martin, Rio Ruiz, uh, Roof Neto Door. We're, we're talking these kind of guys. I would love that. I would have made my day, but I won't bore you guys with the Orioles talk today. What, uh, what else did you guys have on the docket? Anything else you guys want to cover? I do have one thing. Just touch base on the UFC real quick. I don't know if any of you follow it, but McGregor making his comeback after he just snapped his leg like two years ago. This is the first time he's back in the octagon against Chandler. And I was talking to you about this, Jake, but he obviously won't be what he was before. But do you think he can first win this? And if he does win this, do you think he continues to try to fight? Or do you think this is just like a... I'm back, fight, done, and then out. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's, um, I don't want to say money grab because obviously he's got a lot of different revenue streams and he's got the, the booze and everything. I don't think it's going to be the same Connor. Uh, I, I was looking at some of the ticket prices. I wouldn't pay those at the moment either. And I think it's nice. It's nostalgic. You know, all the UFC fans, they'll, they'll love it. And, um, I, I do think he's, He's been a bit distracted. He's had a lot of time off. I don't think he'll be the same, same guy. Uh, might be wrong, but I, I wouldn't expect to see see him like in good form. I th I'm sure the uh, leading up to the fight, like he'll be mentally destroying and conquering all the different press conferences that they're doing. But I'm I'm not very optimistic. I think he's too much of a pretty boy now. Like well, I, I think, think yeah. you know he, he's too clean. Like we want the scrappy guy, the scrap. I mean, he's still going to talk all the crap in the world, you know, but yeah, I, I don't know when, it, when is that card? Is that, um, June 29th, June 29th. Mm -hmm. So about a mm -hmm. month away. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I, go ahead. No, go ahead, Luke. I'm sorry. No, I I'm, I'm, I'm good. Not to pull like an ESPN, like get up or like first take segment here. But is this is like him coming back like Tiger coming back from like post car wreck, like golf car a uh, golf club in the window? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's that big. No, he's not going to be the same. But like we still hold on to hope of him winning. I mean, he did win. Granted, he did win the Masters. Like power to Tiger, love him. But is this going to be the same thing? Like you're just trying to root for what you were when you were younger, and like those feelings that you felt. Even though, yeah, he's like, you know, threw shit at a at a bus and then Tiger cheated on his wife with I don't know how many women. But is it that kind of thing? Not to pull like a get up segment? I don't know if we it can trade like that, but it, it definitely could be. I mean he even talked about his injury, how he said there was like a ten percent chance he wasn't gonna be able to fight again at all, like when he had it. And I don't know, because I wonder how it is when he actually fights, like if he's consciously thinking about that leg, you know, because that's how he fights. That's his back leg usually. So he's always pushing off of it to swing. And it's interesting. I hope he can have like some of the pizzazz, at least because he's usually a stand up fighter who doesn't like to wrestle. But I wouldn't be surprised if he like gets in there and it's like you can tell it's like a different variation of how he used to fight and he's doing some things differently because then everybody kind of know like it's the same as Tiger. Yeah. I, like I said, I think I think you go for the idea of what once was, and you have a good time, right? But it's going to be a little different, 
right? You're going to notice, you know, if we're putting it in Tiger's perspective, that it's not what he once was. Not, not a he world can't walk three days at the Masters. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe he needs pulls in the middle of round three because his back hurts. He, he needs the golf cart like John Daly, you know? Yeah. And like, I'm rooting for him to do well. But I just don't think with all like Connor's broken leg, Tiger's surgeries, and all that, I just, I don't think it's, you're rooting for that, but it's not what it once was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be, I I'm with all this stuff going down with Scotty, with him getting arrested the morning of, I, I think Saturday when he fell off, it was a lot more of his caddy not being there and being at that graduation, but interested to see if he can kind of keep finishing, you know, top five, like he was on, uh, like he was doing right before all that happened. But always good to have some buzz going on in, um, in golf. That's, that's typically not the case. Yeah, and feel, guys, feel free to th throw stuff in the comments as well. If you would like to, to do like life advice or anything like that, we're all three, all, all four knowledgeable guys have some life experiences, be more than happy to, to explain any sort of life circumstances or any takes you guys have. Ooh, um, yeah. We can either help uh, debunk or agree with. Yeah. And we'll, we'll be, we'll hopefully in the next few weeks, come up with a name. We'll get some social media accounts going, so it'll be much easier to follow. But um, I think that's a wrap, guys. That's great. Love it. Great Thank first you for tuning in. And uh, be sure to subscribe. I can't tell you where to look up the name, but you're listening here. So we'll see you next week.